Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Project Build. This episode, we're going to be looking at uh, replacing the subframe on this uh, JZS 161 GS400 that is owned by my father. So um, we're going to talk to you about what we're going to do with the subframe. And uh, if you guys want to see any more detail on it, then uh, le leave us a comment in the comment section and we'll show you some more detail. So let's go look at the subframe, what we got. Maybe I should talk about why we're replacing the rear subframe. So my dad's rear subframe on his Lexus, uh, we noticed that it was fairly crusty and um, the rear sway bar bracket, there ended up being a crack in it. And it was so crusty that it didn't look like we were able to weld anything in it. All the bushings are getting pretty tired. It has 260,000 kilometers on it. So it's, it's starting to show its age. So I picked up this off of eBay. It's a low kilometer unit from Japan, so it's never seen any salt. And you can tell it's super clean. You could eat off it. These bolts come right, right apart, uh, so there's no fighting with anything. One noticeable difference uh, from the North American, uh, from the Japanese versions of the GS is that it's got this rear steer that the Aristos came with. Now, the GS is here in North America, never came with them, so we're gonna have to delete this. And what we're gonna do is take it out, I'm gonna send it off to my brother. He's gonna do some templating and he's gonna come up with a bar, so that way we can reuse these uh, outer tie rod ends and then uh, make delete the rear steer essentially from the subframe assembly. Trying to implement this to work in our car is too much of a task electronically, so we're just gonna go ahead and delete it. There's delete kits out there you can get as well, but we're gonna try to fab something up. So that's what we're gonna do for that. Um, there's a bunch of these control arms uh, that we're gonna replace. So the two top ones here, uh, there's some bushings in the knuckles and stuff like that. We also have a, uh, an LSD that we're gonna be throwing into the rear differential as well. So we have to take this thing right out and uh, swap over the, the differential. And I think that's kind of it. Let's uh, have a look at the parts. And right here in the front are some FIGS engineering uh, brace bars. I mean, they're kind of a limited time production. I figured I'd just throw them in just for just for some fun. We've got some stainless steel brake lines seeing how we have to take the brakes apart to put the whole subframe in. So we're gonna put some stainless steel lines in there. I've also got some Dorman uh, knuckle bushings. So these go in the upper knuckle or I guess it's the lower or the upper of the lower two bushings. So we're gonna replace those while it's all out. These are the uh, Mivitech uh, upper control arms that we're gonna put in as well. Um, they're gonna be fairly easy to drop right in. And then uh, we also have uh, some strut bushing uh, refresh kits here from Mivitech as well. I like the Mivitech stuff. I've used it plenty on my previous cars and, and they've had a lot of good results with them. So we're gonna go with that. Um, here we have the LSD diff, and this came from a Toyota Supra, an MK4 Supra. So it's an OEM unit, which is nice. It's got the nice torsion diff, uh, meant for a lot of comfort, where a lot of the aftermarket differentials use clutch packs in here, and you get a little bit more of a, uh, I guess, uh, not such a smooth drive, and, and this will give you a nice OEM uh, feel to it. So it's definitely, it's, it's, it's definitely preferred, and, and I'm happy that we were able to source one of these uh, locally, actually. Um, we also have a brake refresh kit, so I'm going to take apart all the brake calipers. I'm going to send those out to Powercoin to my brothers, and uh, then I'm going to put a bunch of new uh, seals in it. Uh, and here we have just a bunch of filters we're going to do as part of the maintenance. We have a fuel filter, cabin filter, and an air filter, and we'll do that while we're taking it all apart. And what's not shown here uh, is the rear sway bar, so I was able to source a... Uh, rear sway bar from Super Pro or Figs Engineering, and uh, we're gonna pop one of those in as well. Maybe do some end links, and then we'll clean up the whole subframe, maybe paint a couple things, and then uh, drop four bolts and bolt it right back in without my dad even noticing. <laughs> oh, right, so I, I'd, I'd like to give a quick little shout out though um, uh, to my brother who is heavily uh, subsidizing this program or this, this project. If you wanna give yourself a quick little flash, Brad, thank you for acquiring the subframe for us and uh, yeah, we're, we're gonna do it all as a family and it should be a good time. So a little challenge that I've had with this refresh uh, that I've noticed so far is uh, a lot of these bushings, um, nobody seems to make aftermarket bushings like this. Mivitech does, thankfully, or Dorman does for these, thankfully, um, but there's a lot of other bushings and I'll show you like these subframe bushings here. You can't buy these subframe bushings from Lexus, from Toyota, 
from anywhere on eBay for like an OEM rubber bushing. The only thing that people sell are poly or solid aluminum bushings. And same thing with your rear diff mounts here and underneath in here. And it's, it's a, I didn't know this, uh, and it's a bit disappointing because I really want to maintain uh, a, a very decent ride quality for my father. And once you start replacing these with poly, you can probably get squeaks, it gets a little rougher, you start feeling some vibrations and stuff like that. And it's really frustrating because uh, on all the Audis that I have, you can replace these bushings for uh, $5. There's aftermarket stuff for five bucks, or you could even find the OEM stuff from a sport version of the Audis and stuff like that. So I don't know why Lexus deems these not serviceable. Guys punch them out, put solid stuff in there or the poly stuff and uh, there's no rubber equivalent, which is very frustrating, um, especially when you you have owners like us that that want that quality of ride um, and, and not just taking it straight to the track. So it's kind of one of those things that uh, makes you think that these things are all disposable um, and that's probably Lexus's view on it that nobody's going to want to ever replace these. So why bother even having uh, that those templates out for aftermarket suppliers to manufacture. I don't I don't know if that's their mentality, but, but anyways, um, this is our project, guys. Uh, if there's anything that you want to see specifically uh, that we're doing, we'll we'll definitely get a recording of it. Maybe it's this uh, rear rear steer delete. Uh, we can get into detail about that, or even the uh, LSD. That should be a fun little thing to do. And uh, if there's anything or any comments, please let us know. Like, subscribe, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> And okay, just a nice clap and you're good to